Imagine the greatest love that you carry throughout your life, the love for your family. Then imagine finding out your family's genes carry a potentially deadly threat, the threat of hereditary cancer. Today we'll take that very journey with two extraordinary families and we'll introduce you to a powerful weapon in the fight against hereditary cancer that's giving hope to families everywhere. I'm Erica Vitrini and welcome to a very special edition of Access Health. Their genes carry inherited mutations that carry through generations of family members, bringing with them a significantly higher risk of a cancer diagnosis. So there's three young breast cancers in 30s. What's going on with this family? Most people think about cancer as something that you either remove or treat. And I've learned it's actually something you can prevent. It's so important for people to know their family history and their health. It's so important for people to communicate that to their physicians. These are the Kimball sisters, a close family of five girls. Three of the older sisters were diagnosed in succession with breast cancer in their early 30s. My name is Cynthia Kimball Davis. I'm the second oldest of five daughters. I discovered I had breast cancer uh, when I was uh, 30 years old and it was a pea-sized lump in my left breast. And then when the biopsy came back and they said it was cancer, I couldn't believe it. So that kind of started an odyssey in our family. My name is Tammy Kimball. I am the fourth of five girls of the Kimball family. My diagnosis is I have not had cancer. I'm unaffected or what is called a provider. So a provider is um, a person who is um, at higher risk for um, a cancer, but um, has not had cancer. My mom was very good about making sure I knew what was going on. You know, your aunt's going through breast cancer, she's going to be fine. And just always putting that awareness into the back of my mind, starting at a young age. So after um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, five years later, another sister's diagnosed with breast cancer, and then a third sister in her 30s, our doctors were like, what's going on with these young cancers? So we did genetic testing, and that was where we were like, okay, something's definitely going on in this family. Meet Diane Hardesty and Chris Moyer, mother and son. There have been 13 cancer diagnoses and 10 cancer deaths over the past five generations of their family. I had endometriosis and it ended up saving my life. We'd had several generations of cancer at that point and I ended up having to have a hysterectomy and I also had my appendix removed and at 29, both of those parts that they took out of me were precancerous. And now I'm thinking, oh no, my body has whatever this thing is that's killing my family. The idea of cancer uh, really sort of being something looming over our family isn't something I, I really thought about or wasn't part of my reality until I was 12. Um, and that's when I uh, watched my grandmother die from cancer. The big solidification of that was watching my cousin die at 16 of cancer. Marianne Lotito is a certified genetic counselor with over 15 years of experience in cancer genetics. She currently works at Overlake Medical Center in Bellevue, Washington. Hereditary cancer is defined by having a genetic predisposition, a gene that's not working the way it's supposed to, that's being passed on from one individual to the next, that greatly increases the risk for cancer to happen at some point in the future. Not everybody with a gene mutation will develop cancer, but it just means that the risk is significantly greater than general population. Cancer risk can be inherited from either the mom's side or the dad's side of the family. Even though a lot of times we're talking about breast cancer and ovarian cancer, it's family history on dad's side that's just as important, and we inherit one copy from mom and one copy from dad. And looking back in my dad's history, we have this uh, genealogy of breast and ovarian cancer and uh, we're shocked. Uh, eventually, all of us test. All five girls have the same mutation as my dad. 
Everybody has a risk to develop cancer, but those risks can be different. We know that in general there are three different buckets of cancer risk. General population, which is sporadic cancers. Familial cancer, there may be cancers in the family. There may be different types of cancer and in different individuals. There may be shared habits, shared environment that lead to the risk in that family. And then hereditary risk, which is different from familial because there's a gene mutation that's being passed on that greatly increases the risk for cancer to develop. The only way to differentiate when somebody has a family history of cancer, whether it's familial or hereditary, is by doing genetic testing to find out if they have an underlying mutation in a gene. There are a lot of different hereditary cancer syndromes. Two of the most common ones are hereditary breast and ovarian cancer and hereditary colon cancer or Lynch syndrome. Patients who test positive for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer have dramatically increased risks for cancer than the general population risk. The risk for breast cancer can be as high as up to 87% when there's a BRCA mutation. The risk for ovarian cancer can be as high as 63%. The risk for colorectal cancer, when there's a mutation in one of the Lynch genes, that risk can be as high as 80%. For endometrial cancer, when there's a mutation in one of these genes, that risk to develop endometrial cancer can be as high as 70%. The risk for a second cancer is dramatically higher for people who have a hereditary cancer syndrome. For example, the risk to have a second breast cancer when a woman's already been diagnosed with one can be as high as 20% within five years. There can be a 13% chance to have an ovarian cancer diagnosed after breast cancer. Coming up after the break. She removed both healthy breasts willingly in her 30s. Why would she do that? What's stronger than the power of a deadly disease that plagues entire generations of a family? The power of love, the power of family, and as you're about to find out, the power of knowledge. Here now to explain why awareness, risk assessment, and genetic testing are so important is Angelina Jolie's breast surgeon, Dr. Christy Funk. Knowing your family history unlocks the key to your DNA. You need to find out. And as generations go by, the information is lost. So you need to find out now before your great, great aunt, who knows everything, passes away. First, you have to realize that the family history is extensive and it's mom and dad's side, first, second, and third degree relatives. So do you know what your father's mother's brother died from? Because you should, and it counts. With your family history, you want to be proactive and you want to share that with your doctor. If we don't know what type of cancer somebody in the family has, we may not know to be worried about developing that cancer. Having multiple cancers at a young age or rare cancers are all red flags for an inherited gene mutation. Multiple cancers on the same side of the family, particularly breast, ovarian, but also prostate, colon, stomach, melanoma, uterine, these all fall into this category of high-risk gene mutations. So three or more on the same side of the family, young, anybody under 50 years old who's had any of these cancers I mentioned, and rare, so ovarian cancer, male breast cancer, these are uncommon. My dad's had mammograms, and which is wild because you know I look at them, I'm like, how could you give us a, a mutation, breast and ovarian cancer related, but he could get breast cancer too, and men do. So we have a link to a hereditary cancer quiz where a patient can go on to this website and put in their family history information and it will let them know if they're at elevated risk for hereditary cancer or not. You can take that in to your healthcare provider and have a more detailed conversation to see if there's a genetic test that could be used to help save your life. Families that have a hereditary cancer syndrome and don't know it are like entire families standing on train tracks and they don't even know the train is coming. And it's mostly full of preventable cancers, like colon cancer. So if you identify one patient in my family, that was me, you can get that whole family off the train tracks. The whole reasoning of me getting tested is, well, my mom has the mutation first and foremost, and then I have four aunts that have the mutation as well. So five women in our family, that's extremely rare. And then three of them had cancer all in their early 30s. And so no questions asked, I knew that I wanted to get tested by the time I was 21 years old. 
Someone at risk should get tested for hereditary cancer because it changes how we manage their health and their screening. So physicians now know which organs are at risk and they can do appropriate surveillance. That person can choose to do risk-reducing operations. So it can save their lives by knowing what to look for and finding things early or eliminating the possibility of cancer altogether. Seeing my sisters go through cancer is devastating. I saw how it affected them, their families, their children, and I wanted to prevent that. My mom was great that she was insistent that I have genetic testing. Um, when it came back positive, I had control. I immediately started with my treatment plan in preventing cancer and what I needed to do. When I'm first seeing a newly diagnosed mutation carrier, my initial goal is to learn about her or him. Usually it's her. We have to only spend a few minutes, but I get a sense of where we are in this person's life and what this gene mutation will do to disrupt her previous plan to live out this life. And then we choose one of three basic paths. Surveillance, which consists of exams and imaging, staggered every few months throughout the year. And the imaging for breasts is an MRI and mammogram and screening ultrasound. Then road two takes that same surveillance path but adds in some risk-reducing medications that are available. And then path three is the maximal risk reduction in that surgery. You remove the organs at risk. So we've had five prophylactic double mastectomies and we've had um, oophorectomies, hysterectomies. So we have no female parts. But the cool thing is we're female and we feel female and we feel sexy. For years, every time I'd hear somebody talk about a BRCA mutation, and a preventive mastectomy, I would say, oh, well, that's a no-brainer. Of course I would do that. Well, now I'm being told that, but it's my colon, and I want to live. And if my body has spent the last three years trying to make colon cancer, yeah, let's take this out. The benefit from the surgical road is maximal risk reduction. If there has yet to be a cancer, it is very unlikely that you will ever get one far below population risk, so you've really done some intense intervention with surgery. I'm going to rule this mutation. It's not gonna run my life, and that all starts with knowing about symptoms. It starts with knowing what my options are, what my path is going to look like until I decide to get preventative surgery. Coming up after the break, awareness of inherited cancer risk finally makes national headlines, thanks largely to one simple test and one of Hollywood's biggest superstars. If you and your family member had an almost certain chance of developing cancer, what would you do? If you could learn more about your cancer risks with the hope of preventing cancer, would you want to know? It's an intensely personal issue that gained major awareness recently when actress Angelina Jolie went public with her own hereditary cancer story, which has affected both her and her family. You know, the Angelina Jolie effect is like the world's first unending ripple. She removed both healthy breasts willingly in her 30s. And everybody who found that out had to say, why would she do that? And that instantaneously sparked conversations, understanding. It demystified, what is a BRCA gene mutation? Could I have it? Do you have it? Should I test for it? How do you test for it? What do you do if you have it? it all of these conversations became commonplace. And women who, and men who were previously misunderstood in their decision making regarding this gene mutation suddenly had someone they could point to. When it, it, the idea of that type of testing came up, uh, I was all for it. You know, having more knowledge, I would always take that. So going in for a simple blood test is a small price to pay to you know, have that knowledge of whether or not um, you have a predisposition for certain types of cancer. Testing for a gene mutation could not be simpler. You go into your doctor's office, they sample your DNA via blood or a saliva sample. What a simple test. In my case, one little tiny tube of blood changed my future and my family's future. A panel test allows us to look at multiple genes across multiple hereditary cancer syndromes at one time. So for example, if a patient has breast, colon, and ovarian cancer in their family history, we can assess all of the genes that might explain why those cancers are happening with one test. 
Once the results are back, your doctor or genetic specialist will review the results with you and create an action plan. When someone has a positive gene result, then we have to embark on one of these roads of either surveillance with risk reduction or surgery. So if there's a mutation in the family, like your mother has it and you don't have it, you're off the hook. Obviously getting a test back that said I don't have it and that I was negative kind of came as a big relief in some ways, but knowing that I didn't have it and that because I don't have it, I couldn't have passed it along to my kids, that's probably the greatest part for sure. Genetic testing labs are not created equal, and what you're looking for in choosing one is one that has been around a long time, that has a large database so they know what they're looking at when they get a result. And what matters most to me as a physician and surgeon is, are they accurate? When they say you have a mutation, do you really have one? Because we are about to potentially do some irreversible extreme things like remove both breasts and ovaries. I personally prefer Myriad Genetics. They've been around over 20 years as opposed to the majority of labs which are one to two years old. And I trust the results. Another strong point about Myriad is they're very dedicated to educating patients and physicians about gene mutation results and increasing awareness. So nobody's left uncertain about their results and what the next steps are and what it all means. Testing now qualifies as a preventive healthcare screening under the Affordable Healthcare Act. So as such, that means that if you meet national guidelines for genetic testing, it will be free for you. There are some programs that will help subsidize and offset the costs. Myriad, for example, does have a patient assistance program. And then near and dear to my heart, the Pink Lotus Foundation provides low-income, uninsured, and underinsured women 100% free access to breast screening, all the surveillance they need if they're known carriers and want surgery. We provide all of that. So there are resources available. Cost should not be the fear factor to trying to save your own life. First, find out your family history. So talk to family members, get all those facts straight, and then visit hcq.myriad.com. It is a simple questionnaire, less than one minute to take, and it will let you know if you have any red flags for genetic mutations. Well, I don't think that there is a negative to genetic testing. Whether you find out you have it or you don't, it still allows you to move forward in a different way than you would have been going before. Because if you know you do have it, then you can make some decisions for yourself that allow you to prevent things from ever getting to a state where they're potentially irrecoverable. But if you don't have it, it also allows you to live your life differently knowing that uh, you don't have to go through unnecessary medical procedures, you don't have to have this uh, extra rain cloud following you around of worry, and especially when it comes to your kids. Probably the biggest thing that's changed for me is the lack of fear over my son and my grandsons. Knowing, sure, they could get cancer like other people, sporadic cancer, but knowing that they didn't inherit this and this ends with me, what a gift. We have no more cancer in our family. We're finding positives and negatives with the mutation, but that's an answer. I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I don't have cancer and do, making those decisions to really reduce my risk. I'll take that any day over cancer. I want people to be aware of their family history, um, to know it. Knowledge is power. We want to conclude this special episode of Access Health by reposting some resources for any one of you who thinks your family may be at risk for hereditary cancer. Take the quiz at hcq.myriad.com. And of course, you can also go straight to accesshealth.tv to watch this program again, which we encourage you to do because it's that important. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Don't be afraid of the answer. Knowledge is power and power eradicates fear. And when you're fearless, you will make all the right choices.